We can't taste My anything. mouth is salivating. And that, to me, that looked a little bit lighter. Oh, it did. See the difference between... One was golden. This, yeah, one was golden and one was really clear. Ah. Oh. This is Shelly Aerosmith with Aerosmith Farms, and she's going to teach us about bees today. You were going to tell us a little bit about pollen. Yes, it's part of the life cycle of the bee. Uh, the, when you see a bee in your garden and it's got these yellow bloomers on its legs, that's pollen that it's collecting. It's, um, it collects the pollen to use in the life cycle of the bee. As They don't have a lot of time to go through. Oh, my goodness gracious. And this is the brood box. This, this is, is the brood box. This is where the queen is laying eggs. All the cap cells that you see there are um, brood cells that are babies being born, being developed. It starts as an egg. And once it turns into a larva, the worker bees will pack the cell with pollen and nectar mixture, and the bees will the the larva will then develop and become a bee. And it uses that pollen and, and nectar mixture to um, as its food source during the time that it's developing. Inside that hive with 60,000 bees, you've got one queen. She's in charge. She lays the eggs where she wants to. You've got worker bees that consist of um, everything from the nurse bees that take care of all the bees in the hive, the, the larvae and eggs as they're developing. Uh, the bees, that same bee that's a nurse bee once, will a couple of days later turn into a different kind of bee with a different responsibility and ultimately it will be a worker bee. So that same bee spends 30 days of its life starting at the bottom, working as the, in the nursery, and ending up as a forager bee so that it goes out then and, and forages for honey and pollen. And you said earlier that without bees, we wouldn't really be able to eat. We wouldn't eat very much because the bees, it, it, pollination is required for most plant, all plants in order to develop fruit. So the flower is just the beginning of the real fruit. You have male and female flowers, just like you have male and female people. You need to have the pollination from the male and female in order to uh, develop fruit. And the bees are what actually make that happen. So the bees take the pollen and carry it around. As, they, as they're collecting pollen, they're also leaving pollen. to do this because I lose a day's worth of nectar collecting if I oversmoke my bees. So, but you see how clear that made the, the frames. You can Absolutely. do anything you want to now. So you just puff a little smoke and they tend to go away. Oh. So you can examine at the time of year when you need to look at the bees, whether they're having enough babies, there's enough covered brood, there's enough stores for them in the pollen and the nectar for them to carry on with their brood rearing. That's the job of a beekeeper, making sure that the, in these little boxes, they have everything that they need. Oh. The, the sticky sound. Sticky sound. That's the propolis. See all this stuff around here? And all the way around the edge of the hive that's sticking up there, that's propolis. And that's what the bees collect from. And that's what the bees collect from the trees around and use to sanitize and close up their hive for, for um, air lack of air circulation so that they can keep it really tight. Mm. And some bees are more propolis makers than others. Mm. But because it's not capped, it's not honey. It wouldn't taste good now. It'll taste underripe, just like fruit that's underripe. But when they put the little lid on it, the little wax lid that's also made from nectar that they excrete from one of their cell, their um, uh, glands, then it's honey. They've determined that it's ripe and ready to store. This is essentially stores for themselves for their winter survival. And uh, we, as beekeepers, only take the extra that they, we know they don't need to survive in winter. Look at the difference in the color of the capping here and here. See, this is browner and this is whiter. It meant that the bees were using different nectar here than here oh. to cover their combs with. And the different, different flowers produce different colors of nectar, which produce different kinds of honey, different flavors of honey. Another reason that I painted them different colors and different patterns, so that they could more easily come back to their box. If they have to spend another two minutes finding their own home, then that's two minutes of honey that they've used up flapping their wings trying to find their way home. Oh. It's not honey for me and for you for <laughs> later. What does it teach you about life? Uh, it teaches me that we should all really be friendly to each other and work together because we get, get more that way than, being, than, than fighting. <laughs>